Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP, and this is a tale of one truck, two features, really maybe two trucks, two features. At first glance, you see mini truck in November 2000 on the left, and April 2000 street trucks. What do they have in common? Let's take a look. We'll start here. Special mini trucks section. So, of course... Street trucks had branched off and they started with August 99. So there are three issues in 99 by monthly. They, of course, hit January. They come out as expected with monthly issues. So four into the new year, plus the three from previous years, or from 99 rather, you basically end up with the seventh cover. And they wanted to uh, reassure their their. Uh, viewers, right, they're, they're enthusiasts, that they were the all-encompassing custom truck publication. I was talking to Brandon Burrell the other day about that. We both quoted that tagline there. And uh, the special mini truck section ties into the truck you see right there. Look familiar? So basically... What we're going to see here is Radar's truck appears in two issues, of course, on the cover here, and later in the year, November 2000. Let's jump right in. So if you've been following the channel, you probably saw the flip through of this issue, November 2000, the other day. What I haven't done is I haven't went back through all the street trucks features, and we'll do that now, um, at least for these two trucks. Courtney shoots these trucks, a pair of the world's finest mini trucks. And what he did, not only did Radar's truck appear on the cover, he did almost like a mock, what a mock cover would look like. And of course, it's mini trucks, maybe a little jab at mini trucking. You see Ty Zito's supercharged Mazda that Craig now owns and has been kind of the curator of. And then an awesome, awesome, awesome shot of Radar's Isuzu. Now, back in the day, I always assumed that this was a rolling shot. And as I pointed out over the years, I do believe that the trucks are just parked. Of course, you got perfect lighting on the bumpers and grills. You can see where it's kind of blurred here. So it does look like a rolling shot and possibly. But I think the giveaway here is that these trucks are way too close. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from it. I think it's awesome. Um, I would uh, prefer this over just a regular feature. Uh, you see here Isuzu Space Cab built by Radar Hendricks. Of course, you guys know Radar, one part, um, one third, probably bigger than that if you count the wives as well. Uh, the team that puts on Lone Star Throwdown, of course, he's behind the West Coast influence as well. You got Turned Up Page. The DA kind of ties into this truck, but basically a pair of the world's finest mini trucks. Of course, both NC. You can see the logo there and here. Pretty cool stuff. Cover. And potentially a second cover. Now we're going to tie in the rest of this flip through. Look at how awesome Street Trucks did with these layouts. You know, Courtney shoots and does the write-up. Um, early on, I would love how they would have like a front three-quarter shot. Here's kind of a side shot. You have the title, boom, along the bottom. And then you would have this little bit bigger font here that would give you the lead in to the story with some killer photos. The layouts were always on point. Radar's engine doesn't get enough credit for how clean that thing was. You can see Pat Maxwell sticker on the back. He did the rendering, which you guys saw when I did the flip through of Mini Truck and Magazine. And then of course you always had the street trucks. They would stamp that right there. That was the original logo, yellow and white. And then boom, you've got your side shot slash rear three quarter. Uh, they'd flip the truck around oftentimes in the same spot, which was fantastic. You can, of course, see the big tree here that's kind of partially blocked out with this uh, black box there for some of the font. But how awesome is this feature? The truck, um, they would do a good job with um, the taillights often on. Uh, probably, I'm guessing Radar's sitting in the truck now because you've got the tail lights on here. You see the third brake light, the tag lights on, so the headlights are on. But uh, just very, very cool. 
and they would always just have their three or four lines here, depending on if it was in a club, if the, if the person was in a club. You see here, of course, NC called out. The pumpkin, how clean that was, painted orange. Super clean interior, all that tweed. That grill, the paint, the graphics, the interior in terms of the sculpture on the door panels. Pretty flawless. And again, just another awesome feature right here, boom, on the cover just to kind of tie in. And then of course you see the Maxwell, Pat Maxwell. Again, some of the same type. You know, the truck was basically shot two times that year. Now there's another tie in in this issue. And this is one of the most underrated features ever. A nighttime shoot long before guys are doing these type of things these days. Now, sure, I'm sure there were photographers that were doing it, but not truck features. This thing was freaking sick shot at night and you can just see cow k-a-l uh the amazing paint that he laid down he had he's been painting a long time i've talked to him uh, a lot of guys have used him and he's got a story to tell as well and you can just see how epic that truck looks with the lighting that they've got on it and then they've got that uh, long exposure shot i'm assuming right to get that that wavy line on the ground or on the rise as we say these days um that ties into if i remember correctly the license plate which we'll see right here on d-a-g-r-d this is an awesome photo so lake charles so i'm assuming it was shot at the lake charles show midnight fantasies um that's my assumption you know that that radar would have been over there but even this photo i mean just Right there in front of the Lake Charles Yacht Club, you've got the roped deals there. Of course, the boat in the back kind of being blocked by the sign, but just a real cool photo. Not maybe I'm not, maybe not always a fan of, of features in grass, but to me that photo works fantastic. Here you see the rag top, the stereo setup, the interior, how cool that was. With I think a lot of it's the same. And then, of course, something totally different you didn't see very often. We see the ST signifying that that was the end. But wait, there's more. Although it was not featured, well, from my memory, up till this point, for sure, it does get the coveted one page of Mini Truck Graffiti. Now, we've seen um, Mosbury Delight that's the only truck that I could remember that had the entire one page for one truck, for one photo rather. This is one truck, one page for the mini truck and graffiti. Again, another awesome feat and you can just see fantastic photos. You can see Cal's logo right here and you can see on DA, on the ground. But um, just a, an amazing truck and it's cool that Craig owns it. So how crazy is that? You basically end up with April 2000, Radar and Ty Zito, kind of on their own cover here, right? But I'm thankful that Lance and team over at Mini Truck and Magazine still ran Radar's truck on the cover because it, des it, it deserved it. And Street Trucks was new at the time. Of course, they wanted to kind of reinforce their dominance, which they did, I think, with the content that they put out. But certainly this was freaking awesome. And this is kind of underrated because I don't think the street trucks magazines are as collectible yet. They're starting to become a little bit more collectible. Thank, thank goodness I've saved all of mine. And I had every issue except for May 2000. Luckily, one of the kinfolk up in Canada hooked it up. And I've shared some of that with you guys. But um, truly, truly an epic shoot. Two trucks. Uh, two trucks, almost two covers, really. You know, if you think about radars here on the on the cover as we wind this down. Special mini trucks section. Shout out to all of the viewers out there. Uh, if you get an opportunity, subscribe, turn on the bell notification or tap the bell. Uh, leave a comment, share it with the kin folk, share it with a couple people that say, hey man, you know, these channels keep it mini trucking alive. Uh, speaking of that, shout out to hashtag mini movement. James is a good guy, and he often reinforces, you know, we got to keep mini trucking alive, and I agree.
And uh, of course, that doesn't just mean this magazine. There's lots of content out there. And uh, we certainly appreciate all the support. We're going to keep it going as long as we can. Stay on the rise and check us out, OLP, via pretty much any podcast app. Salute to Radar. Salute to Tizito. Salute to Courtney Hallowell. Rest in peace. Lance. All the guys that have brought us this content for many years. We are